Okay, so I am going to cover briefly how to how to get started with uh, MOVR UGC content. Um, so if you're already on the MOVR Discord, you'll see a bunch of these chats or channels. UGC Share, which is User Generated Content Share, is where you'll go to find a bunch of cool stuff. We have all kinds of great stuff in here. Um, we're going to try setting up a new system that I haven't done before. Um, so let's say you're in here, you find Mordred Systems. So this one has a bunch. This one is like a huge download with all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and you can download it from the Google Drive here. Looks like that's where he's got the link. Um, but he's also got a spot here, I think. But he says it's always free. You can donate to him. Um, so we're going to try and set up the Sega Dreamcast, which I thought I saw in here. There it is. Sega Dreamcast. So I never owned a Sega Dreamcast. I know it was pretty popular. Um, but as far as I know, I don't have it set up. So you'll download it. I've already downloaded the all-in-one and dropped um, the systems in. So one thing that's important, and hopefully you've already done this, is you can't just download a UGC and install it and get started. What you really need to do is read about here in UGC Share. It's the welcome. So click on this post. So we're going to go to this post, and all that's going to come up is this little message here. You can learn how to import UGC files with this quick tutorial. So installing Wigu and loading. So we're going to click on that and loading UGC files. So this is going to give you a little overview of installing Wigu. Um, and then you're going to need to be on the latest version of MUVR, which is 1.0.12. This is not going to work unless you're on the latest version and then you download the Wigu here and get that all installed. So it's going to tell you what to do, extract it to your MUVR folder, this Wigu, for example, and then um, if you ever need to temporarily disable Wigu, it's got some instructions there in case something breaks. Um, you can even download a, a sample UGC file, so this is just a stool. So this isn't a system, it's just a stool. So you'll need to, um, this will be a lot easier. You can just drop in the UGC and it will actually install it for you. Okay, so these instructions will pretty much give you the rundown. Um, download the sample UGC. You can test out with this stool here. Drop it into the MUVR custom UGC folder and you're ready to run a movie R. So that's for a basic object that's not interactive. Um, that'll work right away, um, but some of your systems, you'll need to do a little more. Um, so anything you like is in UGC Share. If a console or cartridge you see download has a note like custom media, for example, you'll need to drop um, the custom media instructions um, into the custom media txt file. So for example, if you're downloading a specific uh, system and it happens to say, hey, you need to edit your custom media txt file, you'll need to add that, that bit to it. So for example, um, since I already have all those systems, we're going to go to, I've got a couple new uh, system UGCs I'm going to go ahead and install just for demoing this uh, idea. We're going to go over to the custom folder and UGC. Here are all my custom objects and custom system objects. So here are a couple new ones. I'm going to go ahead. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop them in. So those are in and of course I have the Sega Dreamcast. So I do have the Sega Dreamcast for example is in here under MUVR custom UGC. Okay, so we're in the MUVR folder. We're going to head over to Game Scanner folder. And we're going to open the custom media TXT file. Alright, so we've got our custom media 
txt file open and this is where you'll add each line for each system that's required. Um, if we go back over to Discord, um, he has a general list of systems here. You don't want to copy this, but you want to copy where it has sort of this highlighted look to it. This um, It'll say important, add this to your custom media TXT file, which should be placed in a MVR game scanner folder and then run the game scanner to ensure proper systems appear. So make sure you copy all these systems. So Sega, you'll notice Sega Dreamcast isn't listed here, so it doesn't require uh, this addition. Um, but the rest of these systems as part of this whole group, this will be the catch-all that will cover the other ones that may not work out of the box. So we copy those. And we make sure to add it in here, which I already have. You just paste it in. Now this may become a longer list of stuff, so you know, as you you know, if you download one system, you know, just hit return and paste the new system here um, in the next spot. Make sure you save before you close it. Alright, that part is ready to go. So games. Uh, we don't have a Sega. Dreamcast folder yet, so we're going to go ahead and create a new folder. Sega Dreamcast. And we're going to drop some games in. What we're going to do is so I always kind of start here at the top. I go from left, first line, to the second line, from left to right. So I'll always hit attempt autofill so it'll look for the folder if it hadn't seen it. It's already found the folder. Sometimes I'll hit save changes. It's the next step if it gives me that option. Um, I've already kind of run through this, so it's not giving me that. I'll hit update core data as the next step. Okay, and at that point, if you don't have the core, it'll give you the option to download missing cores. So at that point, you'll click this button, and it'll actually download the core for the Sega Dreamcast, the Naomi Flycast. So at that point, you'll see a download screen. It'll start downloading that. And then once that's done, then you're good to hit scan games for MOVR. But before we do that, it's a good, it's a good idea to check with these three dots, uh, these three lines, this little hamburger menu here. Click on that. Um, you can also update core here, but we're going to look at list of supported files. So we're going to look at these supported files. It has zip, 7-zip, CHD, CDI, and so forth. It's got a bunch of these files. If we look in our folder over here, these are RAR files, so these aren't going to work. So you'll need to extract your file into a folder and double check that it's the supported file type. So CDI is indeed the right file type here that's listed. It's the fourth option here. So we're good to go ahead and scan the games. Also, it's important to note in here if you're doing like arcades, for example, let's go over to our arcades. Um, you might want to uh, enable light gun for your light gun games or mouse input or keyboard. So you have some you have some other options here that you might not know about. So I know when I was doing arcades, I needed to en enable light gun. I think to to use the light guns properly. We're gonna hit. Attempt autofill again. Okay, save changes, update core data. Okay, now we're going to scan games for MOVR. So it should detect one new game. There, it's found new games detected, one game. All right, we're ready to go. We're ready to open. MOVR. So we're going to close Game Scanner and we're going to try this out. Okay. We're in MOVR. Uh, for clarity, I went ahead and turned on the light so we can see what we're doing. All right. So we're in here. I don't have a system connected to the TV. So we're going to click in our left menu button. We're going to go to Systems. And in systems, I have a lot of systems, but you just got to dig around for it. 
There's our Sega Dreamcast. We're going to go ahead and grab that. We're going to grab the cord from the back. Apparently there's an easier way to do this. Uh, I think you can like click on the system and then the TV, but I've been unable to get that to work. I need to read about that again. All right, so uh, I just did it manually. So that's plugged in. We're going to go ahead and open. Um, then we're going to go ahead and grab our disc. So we're going to look for Sega Dreamcast now. There's our disc. It doesn't have artwork yet because I haven't created a custom folder for the artwork for Sega Dreamcast yet. But if I do more than a few games, I'll definitely start looking for artwork. I've got the setting um, where I can throw to place the game. So I'm going to just go ahead and throw that in. That's pretty helpful for the arcades especially. You go to settings, and I think it's under controls insert games by throwing check that off and that just makes it easier if you're struggling to get a game in um, it's also these games are pretty easy because you know where to put them but i like that throw to so now we're going to go ahead and power this on and you should see it loading up on screen so now our sega dreamcast is now functional in muvr which is not a normal system you would normally have, I don't believe. Um, I still need to do stuff like this, like the Wii U. It'd be fun to check this out and get it working, so I need to get some games and some game scanner. There it is. So you pull trigger, get the little pointer going, hit X to engage. And then I think it's, what is it, Y on this side is start. So I highly recommend grabbing a controller, hooking it up, and then you can play that way. We're just gonna use Welcome to the world of Street Fighter. Yeah, I'm in the world of Street Fighter. It's pretty hard to play with this because like your triggers and your grip are some of your buttons. I gotta pick it up! Which is not ideal. So, anyway, that's how you set up a new system. We were successful in getting it working. I do think I have a, let me see here. I know I've got some custom controllers. Not in system, it must be UGC props. Ooh, we're running a little slow tonight. There it is. So, there's the Dreamcast controller. I think this was a, I'm not sure if this was included in Mord Mordred's, uh, systems and props or not i think it might have been because i don't remember downloading this specifically or that specifically i think it came bundled in one of the one of the game packages so so that's pretty cool you can feel like you're you know actually holding the game controller uh, but hey you know what it's neat to set it next to the system that is huge though i don't think uh i don't think they were that big <laughs> compared to the system here's a duplicate copy of the game I was testing out earlier. So yeah, that should be it. That should be what you need to get a new system up and running. Um, if you like, if you thought this was helpful, if anything I showed you was useful, uh, by all means like, subscribe, tell me what else you'd like to see tutorials on. Um, I did get requests about tutorials on this. Um, so I thought I would share a little bit how to do that. Um, the specific question I had was about arcades. Um, getting their arcades running. It's the same process, except, you know, arcades, the ROMs for those are actually these guys right here. So you will have a new area for arcades. And so these are, you, these are your ROMs. They're little cartridges that you throw into your arcade to get it going. That's basically it. So, um, if you need help with that, of course, let me know. Um, but beyond that, I think that should help cover everything you need to, to know about how to get a new system up and running. Again, always check for that media TXT instructions. You might have to drop in a couple of those lines into your custom media TXT file um, to get certain systems running. It's not all of them, and it's not all objects. Like most of these basic objects don't need that. It's really mostly systems. 
um, that are a little more custom. So yeah, uh, I'm going to leave it there and try and put this video together here soon and get it ready for you guys. And I hope you like, of course, like, subscribe, and shout out any comments you have. Um, and, uh, and I'll catch you on the next one. Adios.